That can't be good. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to another Elliot video. So good to see you again. Okay, I have uh, Graphic design, the movies. These are two things that are very similar to each other. They share so many common features, such as you will usually view them. There, there is a, a, a visual component. Uh, they... So I thought it'd be a great idea for a video to showcase some fantastic movie posters that I think could be a great source of inspiration for your graphic design endeavors. I put a questionnaire out to my Instagram audience asking people what their favorite film posters were. I was so overwhelmed with how many responses that you sweet people gave me that I put off making this video for quite some time. But I have compiled the answers and I'm ready to deliver the results. Now, when I say the greatest movie posters of all time in the title, Let's be honest, that's just clickbait. You think I've seen every single movie poster that exists? Of course not. Most of the answers were just Spider-Man and Avengers Endgame. What was I meant to do with that? So I've tried to pull out some of my favorites from that poll, as well as some of my own that I think are pretty cool. Uh, and then there's also this really good column that you should all check out. It's the movie poster of the week on Mubi. Uh, definitely check that out. I'll leave a link in the bio because that, that's sick. That's like the, so much inspiration in there. Go check that out. So I've pulled some of these from a bunch of different sources. I may or may not say where I got them. Just assume that it's the, I, I just found them. I pulled them out of my ass. So how about we go and sit on that fucking couch and talk about the greatest film posters of all time. Okay. God, I really do love uh, sitting on this couch. Let me tell you that. All right, I got a list here. It's a pretty extensive list. A lot of good films, so buckle up because I'm going to blow your mind with uh, graphic design inspiration. Okay? So, first film we've got is... Avengers Endgame. <laughs> like I said before, a lot of people answered with Avengers Endgame. I have to admit, there it is, it is a certain style of poster. You can't deny that. The superhero style poster is a certain style, and Endgame probably is the best of all of them. So I guess it ticks off kind of a category. Uh, but I just thought, yeah, that'd, that'd be a funny one to start with. Okay, let's get to the real list now. The Shining. All right, this is a, this was very popular as well. A lot of people saying The Shining. Uh, this is a uh, Soul Bass classic. Is it bass or bass? Can someone tell me? Is it bass, Soul Bass guitar? Because I used to play bass guitar. Uh, I actually know how to pronounce his name. I just wanted to drop the fact that I know how to play bass guitar. Maybe some people think that's cool. The uh, aerial of the uh, instruments. <laughs> if you haven't seen this poster, where have you been? This this poster is like iconic. The the yellow is is so bright and beautiful, and that little face shining through on the the there. If you've seen the movie, like the, the face doesn't even like resemble anything close to I think what's actually in the film, which is really cool. It's kind of just like it it embodies the feeling of when you watch it. That's awesome, right? And that text is just like. Oh God, delicious, yeah? Like a little bit rough around the edges. Those eyes, like using the lowercase eyes as the little dot on top, or the technical word, whatever it is. Uh, you know, that's that's really cool that they've done that. So it, this is a, it's a fantastic poster. Unreal, one of my favorites personally as well. So it's, it's a great one. Next up we have House, the 1977 experimental comedy horror film. I had never heard of this film until a bunch of people recommended me to check out the poster. And I can see why the poster is an absolute like, wow, you know? And then I went and watched the trailer and I am definitely so keen on watching this film. Check out the trailer if you haven't, it's wild. But this poster rocks, yeah? Like this face, this haunting face right in the middle there. Like I think horror movie posters have can, can kind of be a bit cliche. I think there's a lot of, you know, classic tropes like a door or something like that. And you know, like who's knocking kind of thing, a little bit of text. And this one's just hits you with that like creepy face right away. Um, a face that I think you would also, and this is something that I think makes a great film poster is like things that make, that, that pique your interest when you're, when you're looking at it. And then you go, Oh, once you've seen the film, you go, ah, yeah? Let me say that better. <laughs> a good poster is like a good teaser trailer. It doesn't give away too much of the film, but then you can watch it back and you go, oh, I get it. That's why they were showing me those certain things. Does that make sense? Next up, we have a poster for the original Beauty and the Beast. This is not the original poster. This is like a another version of the poster uh, that I was sent, which I uh, absolutely adore. It's a beautiful like tribute poster almost. Like it's, it, it feels like it's celebrating its legacy already. You know, like, I don't know if this poster was released when the film originally came out, but like looking back, you can go like, of course, of course it would be depicted like such a beautiful scene. A little bit of text just at the top, the most beautiful love story ever told. 
going down. You, you rarely see text like just dropping like that word by word, but it really works in this poster, I think. It's really cool. But does it compare to the Beauty and the Beast sing-along poster with uh, everyone's favorite character? Uh, what is that? The... It's not the teacup, is it? This is a poster for La Piscine, which I found on Movie Poster of the Week. And it was the, I think the first link that I clicked on that, on that blog and it stuck with me. I adore this poster so much. It's got like a nice minimalist kind of Swiss touch in the way with the, the font. Like you got a little bit of like, I think that's Helvetica in the top left, I imagine, or something bloody close, like Neue Haas Grotesque or something. The leaves of the palm tree slightly going over the La there. Like it's so subtle and it just works out so well. The more you look at it, the more details kind of show up, right? Like only only now am I realizing that like the reflection in the pool is different. Yeah. Maybe someone dies in the pool in this film. I don't know, but they, you know, it, it's, it's making me think, is this more than just a, a, a simple holiday beach time fun? You know, is there a darker twist? I don't know. And how can you not like that shade of yellow? That yellow is just popping off the page right there. This is the kind of poster that you could easily frame and put up on your wall, right? Which I think is a big thing as well. You want these to be like, they're, they're, they're artworks, you know? They're not just marketing material. Like the ones that will stand the test of time are the, the true artworks of the poster world. So... This is definitely one of them. I'm, I'm a huge fan. Next up, we have a poster for Funny Games, the psychological horror thriller film that really stuck with me for a long time after watching it because it is fucking intense. <laughs> this is a poster for the American version, uh, which funnily enough is a uh, shot for shot remake of the 1997 Austrian film by the same director and writer and everything, like just a shot for shot remake. Fascinating choice. This is a poster by Akiko Sterenberger, who I was told uh, is absolutely fantastic. And this was my favorite of their works. And like, wow, a fantastic portfolio. There are a few people who you'll see underneath some of the posters who have really made a mark in like the film poster world, right? Like they're repeatedly hired because they just make fantastic stuff. And it'd be a really cool job to do, you know, just like specialize in film posters, like how some people specialize in album art and stuff. Specializing in film posters would be sick. Maybe, maybe a future career for, for some. Another poster that draws you in at first, makes you ask a lot of questions and then answers them once you've seen the film too and kind of gives you a little bit extra, which is really fun. Nice bit of contrast with the name, Funny Games, of course, and this crying Naomi Watts in the background, like a very kind of different uh, different dimensions being explored here. It, it makes it an interesting look. And a beautifully illustrated style as well. You love to see it. You really see like a such a commitment to this like close-up illustration with a little bit of text. It's divine big fan uh next up we have suspiria this is the uh poster for the remake of suspiria i believe uh which i was recommended a lot and i can see why i remember when this movie was being uh advertised i saw it on like posters around sydney and stuff um th th this text was what stood out to me it's so committed to it being like really out there and bold right which i love about it like the fact that only the s is yellow like the second s why so cool. Using the blood in the background almost as paint, not being able to distinguish between the two. Real good. Makes me wonder if YouTube is going to crack down on this video. We will find out in good time. Everything, everywhere, all at once. There's an alternate version of this poster, which is a lot more simple. But then you watch the film and you go, of course, the poster needs to be entirely maximalist, right? Like it matches up so well. You look at the poster and then you see the film and you go, this is the same thing, you know? Like this is exactly what this suggests. I love it. Every single detail has a purpose. Everything matches up to a reference from the film. It's just like a, a fantastic poster for a fantastic film. I couldn't stop crying at this damn movie. And it still manages not to take your eye away from the text, right? Like everything kind of draws you back into that middle point. So it's got the little marketing touch there, which is really nice. But at the same time, you'd gladly have this framed on your wall. It's a one of the a, a perfect poster, m might I say. I wanted to do a special mention to uh, the Polaroid poster trend, by the way. I don't know if you have uh, seen these before, but this was a huge inspiration for me, I think back in like 2015, maybe? Or I think making a poster for the school play in this exact same style. And I was so proud of myself. I was like, yeah, this is cool. And everyone was like, that's really cool. And I was like, yeah, it is. Now it's the bane of my existence. It makes me want to quit graphic design. The combination of like Baybass New, a random still from the film, and then just copy and paste the exact same details for every single one. It's just, it's it's brilliant. It's, it's just brilliant. And hey, maybe this trend got a lot of people into graphic design and that's pretty cool. So I can appreciate it, but I hate it. But I can appreciate it. I never want to see one again. Midnight Cowboy. Heard great things about this film. Missed the chance of seeing it the other week. Uh, I was busy on the night it was on. 
You didn't need to know that. This is the original poster for it. Uh, this is our first poster that we'll see. I think there's a few more to come uh, in this really tall kind of style, almost like an Instagram story style, which is 1920 by 1080 kind of style. <laughs> I love how tall they are. I think it's cool. I want to see more like this. I, why did we go to like the A4 style? Anyway, an absolutely unreal photo, just saying it all, right? You got the two stars of the film just standing there, you know, full so much presence on this poster it's 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 absurd and then this hit of yellow down the bottom obsessed parasite got a lot of messages about parasite for good reason so this is another poster that you could point to anyone and be like do you remember the poster for parasite and they'd be like yes i do remember the poster for parasite even though i'd seen it or not one of those posters that only gives away so much until you watch the film and then realize more about it which is just great a fantastic typeface as well look at those serifs like just cutting and slashing at each other it's unreal big fan of this poster hannah montana the movie got one message about this one i think but i thought it deserved a shout out a perfect depiction of the two-sided story that is hannah montana and the struggle that is to be a pop star and a country girl at the same time she has the best of both worlds now she has to choose just one uh, that's like me when I have uh, YouTube live streaming and Twitch live streaming. I don't fucking know. I got no idea. Here's another tall one, Metropolis. I think this poster came up in my art exam when I was in like year 12. I think this was, uh, I had to analyze the artistic techniques that make it so good. And if I sat that exam today, I would say things, I think. The use of perspective in this poster is uh, fantastic. The, the lion's pointing us up towards the title, but also down towards the face. A robot face that at the time, the 1920s, you would have looked at and been like, huh? You would have been like, I must get, uh, I must get tickets to the theater to see Metropolis, Fritz, the Fritz Lang classic. And the typography on that Metropolis, wow. It's mechanical, it's corrupt, it's distorted, it's aggressive, it's everything the film is, it's great. This is a poster for the Muppet movie that you may have never seen before. I had never seen it before. And I found it on the poster of the week thing alongside a bunch of other posters from uh, Voldemar Sfiozzi, a Polish poster designer who has made possibly some of my favorite designs I think I've ever seen. The bubble type in the top left, the animal focus with that, you know, using animal, the Muppet, as the, the main focus? What the hell? And this nice shade of red that's kind of just washed over it gives it this cursed like evil tone to it that the movie definitely doesn't have but it's just like a cool interpretation of it I, I i'm such a big fan here are a bunch of other films by the same person by the way this is endless endless inspiration right there next up we have nanny which is a film that is coming out i think today or this week how cool this one really stuck out to me with this like pixel bleeding kind of effect that we got going on because you see it a lot right but it's usually like like the killing of a sacred deer poster, you know, where it's like everything just goes up. This one is just like these little strands that I think are, are much more impactful on the design than the, using the entire thing, right? It's subtle. They're like these little threads that are just falling off the face. It's so cool. And then like to add to that with the text and doing the same thing with the serifs is so sick as well. Beautifully intricate little pixel blades. Very cool design. Next up is a controversial one. A lot of people really liked Jaws. Got a lot of messages about Jaws. Fair enough. It is a fantastic poster. A lot of things good for it. It is one of, if not the most iconic poster of all time. But I offer you something even better. This is the poster for Sand Sharks, a movie similar to Jaws where it asks the question, did you really think you were safe on the sand? Something to think about. This is a poster for La Haine. Vincent Cassell's eyes staring into your soul as you look at the title and you read more. So good. It says so much without doing too much. It's just like, Bang, right in your face. Here we go. I need to see this film. I saw it. I found the trailer for it on YouTube the other day. Uh, and I was like, whoa, this looks like a cool film. I heard great things. I think it has like a 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes something. Have you ever seen that before? I feel like it'd be a crime if I didn't mention The Lobster in this. Yeah, one of the most iconic film posters in the, in the last two decades. Those sad, sad Colin Farrell eyes just staring longingly into the distance, hugging this invisible figure. Futura for the type. Very nice. Must have been a tricky one to compose as well, right? Because you're thinking like the, the brain is going to fill in part of this like invisible figure. Yeah. So you got to kind of like compose it, assuming that. Because like, I, I feel like if you took the components out and you just made them shapes, it'd feel like there should be, it should be closer, right? Like the, the image and the text down the bottom. But it, when you're kind of like assuming that there's more of a shape there in that negative space, it works out really well. Just something to, something to think about as a graphic designer, you know, kind of interesting thing to think about. The Mr. Beast Squid Game thumbnail. Yep, completely agree. Uh, one of the greatest movie posters 
uh, of all time. Look how animated Mr. Beast. I'm not going to go into that. I was specifically sent this version of the Princess Mononoke posters and I can see why. The title in the bottom right with that like red and blue kind of drop shadow going on, going on there. That's like the perfect shade of red, I think. It's like that mix between your, your bold, bright red that Instagram will absolutely compress the shit out of. And then like, another, you know, it's just this beautiful soft red. Such a striking image too to fill the page. And then you have these little details that you read as a secondary. Pulls your eye in and then gets you to buy a ticket. Such a good poster. This could be my favorite poster that I've seen ever. I'm being dead serious here when I say this. This is the Polish poster for Weekend at Bernie's. Compare the pair, okay? The American version and then the Polish version. I haven't seen the film or anything. And, you know, it's very much like what everyone knows about Weekend at Bernie's. But like using the hand and the eyes and everything to make it like a... I don't know if that, that shot itself appears in the film or anything, but it's like the, the metaphor, you know, of like the puppetry and stuff. And then doing that with Bernie. I think it's the one... I think Bernie dies. It's Barney and How I Met Your Mother. I'm pretty sure there was a reference to that. And look at that script combo with that rounded sans serif. I'm so inspired just looking at this post. I love it. So good. All of these were so good. I agree. Which one was your favorite? Let me know. Or if you have any other wild suggestions, feel free to chuck them in the comments below. I would love to hear them and I would love to look them up myself. It's definitely something I'm going to be paying more attention to as I go forward in my life. I'm going to be looking out for all the movie posters everywhere. Even for ones like Boss Baby and other and funnier films that I could have mentioned. But Boss Baby, for some reason... You know how much money Boss Baby made at the box office? Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you had the best time. And make sure to subscribe to the channel if you would like as we push towards our next massive goal of 60,000 subscribers. Because at every 10,000 subscribers, I'm going to do a live stream here on YouTube because I just feel a bit cheeky like that. <laughs> it's a good incentive uh, and makes it easier for me to organize my life. Also, an exciting news, if you saw my burnout video last week, uh, I, I mentioned that I was going to be doing 3D stuff every day and I'm three days in. Look what I've been doing. I've been following internet girl tutorials, which have been absolutely fantastic. And then now I'm kind of like doing my own stuff. Wow. I'm, I'm having fun again. It's, I'm feeling good, everyone. This is great. <laughs> but otherwise, feel free to check out my print store if you'd like to buy print or grab a Caseify case that I made because they're fun too. Um, but otherwise, yeah, other, otherwise I'll see you around. Okay. Thanks so much for coming to the video and I hope you have a lovely week and I have been Elliot you've been great and I'll see you next time okay bye for now <laughs> bye see see ya see you later bye see ya <laughs>